everybody, and welcome to episode 109 of the This Old Knit podcast. I am your host, Nina, otherwise known as Ine, on Ravelry, Instagram, and Pinterest, and you can find show notes for this episode and all previous episodes on the corresponding numbered thread of the This Old Knit podcast group on Ravelry. So thank you for coming back. Um, For those of you just joining me, welcome. And um, I am going to make this probably a pretty quick podcast this morning, but um, we are going to be having a guest next week, so I knew I wouldn't be able to record, so I wanted to um, get an episode out. And also, I finished my sweater, but it is getting really warm, so chances are I won't be able to wear it (laughs) for much longer. So I wanted to make sure I got um, a video with uh, my finished object. So, anyway, I'm going to jump right into things and just a quick announcement that all of the prizes are out other than one. I'm waiting for Looney to get back to me with her address and she will be getting the bag from Coddington. So, um, Looney, as soon as you respond to my PM on Ravelry, um, Autumn will be sending that bag directly to you, so just let me know. And I'm really happy that I've got all of that out and I'm ready to, you know, draw for winners for Q3 at the end of, or Q3, (laughs) quarter one of um, the Stasher Shelf Challenge at the end of March. I say Q3 because at work it is Q3. Anyway, (laughs) um, so yeah, finished objects. I finished my little cabin. Um, I'm not completely happy with it. I think that it's too long and I probably will do some sweater surgery in the future to fix it. But for now, knowing that it's getting warm outside and I probably will not be able to wear it for much longer, that is a job for another day. So probably what I will do is maybe wear it once or twice more, Um, wash it, block it, store it with the rest of the yarn, which I don't have a whole lot of. I think I have about a half a skein left of this yarn. And um, yeah, I'll deal with that next year. Um, So I am gonna go ahead and stand up and show you, but this is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. It is called Little Cabin. Um, I knit it out of uh, blue sky, Surrey Merino. So it is a blend of Surrey alpaca and Merino wool and is really warm. So I wore it today to go to the post office with no coat on and, um, was plenty warm. It is to be fair, 46 degrees outside Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Good God, that's hot. (laughs) But um, it's really comfortable. It's nice. I do like the fit of it on the uh, upper part. I think I did a good job with adjusting for my bust. Um, Just in case if you want to make it and like me, you are concerned about questionable placement of baubles. um, I will walk you through the modifications that I did. But essentially, um, when I got to the part that would have been where I would uh, do the part for the bust. Um, She actually worked the bobbles, I think, up to here and then had like a line of, no, up to here. Then she had a line of bobbles that go across just after you join the arms to the yoke. Um, That would have gone here, but then I would have had the bobbles coming up through my chest and I would have had a line and potentially I would have had a line across the middle of my bust. Um, with lots of teeny tiny baubles. That was not interesting to me at all. Um, So what I did instead is I stopped the baubles just below my bust line. I did increases up to the next size and then I started working garter stitch. I worked garter stitch the fullest part of my bust, decreased back down to the size that I had done for the rest of the sweater and um, you know knit garter up to where I thought I should join for the sleeves. i kept all of those stitches on my needle and then I knit each of the sleeves 
separately but concurrently. This is the first time I've knit sleeves concurrently. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the process, however, you know, whatever, they're exactly the same. Um, and I know that they're the same length, so there's that. Um, and then I joined everything. I did have a little bit of a weirdness because I had been working in garter stitch up to this point. She actually has you knit um, one round and then, um, you know, do that bobble thing and then do the garter. But because you change where your beginning of round marker is, I actually had some weirdness with the garter. So I have one row where I have an additional knit round because you do short rows to uh, raise the back. Um, that's fine though. It helps me know which side is the front and which side is the back. So um, I don't mind it at all. And to be honest, most people have no clue how to knit a sweater anyway. So they're not going to know it's a mistake. Um, everything from joining the arms on up though, I knit in my normal size. So here's the sweater. You'll be able to see. See the line? All of you can see the line because you're knitters. So you know what you're doing. Hello, come back to me. Thank you. Um, so it is an Oliver bobble pattern. It has this nice, um, I can bring it up, lace detail on the bottom that matches the sleeves, which is supposed to be like a little cabin. And then it's got a bobble on the top. So like I said, this is long enough that it actually covers and goes down a bit below my butt. Um, that makes it hard for me to wear with basically anything. <laughs> um, normally I would wear this with jeans and I really can't because it makes the waistband really pop and be pronounced. So I think what I'm going to do um, next year is I'm actually going to cut here, put these stitches on um, a needle. So pick up all the stitches um, unravel down to where I want to go. So probably, I think I want to take off like that much of the length. Um, so I'm probably going to unravel two sets of bobbles and then I will, uh, graft it back together just below the bust line because, um, I think that's where it's going to be the least noticeable. So, you know, I've got a plain garter round there. There's like three plain rounds of garter between each set of bobbles. So um, it'll have to be somewhere in there that I would have a row of garter, or sorry, a row of stockinette here, a row of stockinette there. And then my grafting row will be the third row. Um, but I think I would be much happier with it if it was like this length. I'd feel like I could move around. Right now I feel like if I move around, I have to do a lot of pulling it down and making sure that it stays flat and then doing things with like adjusting my waistband of my pants or skirt. Um, I'm wearing it with yoga pants right now. So, you know, I guess it's good for that, but I wanted it to be more dressy. I didn't want it to be uh, wearing with yoga pants to go bumming around the city. <laughs> so it's just too long. It needs to be shorter. I'm a very short person. I'm only five foot four. Um, so really long stuff on me, I think emphasizes my shortness. It's getting better. It's getting more uh, tolerable. So anyway, I will do that. But like I said, I'm happy to have it off my noodles right now. Little cabin finished. I bought this yarn in 2010. So this is nine year old stash. I'm very happy to have it out of my stash. Like I said, I have half a ball left. I don't think I could have done any better than that given that I bought it way before I even knew how to knit sweaters. Um, this is one of the first sweater quantities that I ever purchased. I've now knit my two first sweater quantities that I ever purchased. The green one I knit into my fridge toast pullover last year. And then this one now I have knit into the little cabin. So I have, I think, one more sweater quantity from around that time frame. It is um, Lansdunord Cash Silk, and it's in kind of a bluey, 
like a cornflower blue color. Um, so that is next on my list to do probably in autumn. Um, but I want to get that knit out too. So that one I have like 20 balls of yarn because clearly I had no freaking clue how much yarn it actually took to knit a sweater. Um, so I got a lot just to make sure that I was covered. Um, and I should address my background. So I'm sitting in a different place just because the light is really weird this time of day. So if I was sitting over in my normal um, nook corner, um, I'd be fighting with the two sets of windows that are over there. So we do have the windows in the dining room. Um, so that's my dining room. Front doors right here. Um, but you're in front of my stash wall. So this is my woolen vine cubby and this cute little uh, cupcake soap um, is a unicorn. And um, Kristen gave that to me a couple years ago in a birthday package, uh, but I don't wanna use it because it's too cute. So I sit it as a decoration instead of using it as a soap because it is too cute to use as a soap. My nose is very stuffy, I'm sorry. So this is the main thing I was knitting on because I really, 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 really wanted to get it off of the needles because I knew it's getting warm, not going to be able to wear it very much. And frankly, I was a little bit worried that it wasn't going to fit me at all and it was going to look awful. I'm really glad it doesn't. It does not look awful. My modifications work. I'm very happy with, like I said, doing this garter. Um, I also forgot to mention I did the same thing on the sleeves just so it wouldn't look weird. Um, that it would look more contiguous. I just guessed on where to start that garter. I sort of um, put the sleeves on and then kind of measured where it was hitting, kind of putting my body down. As you can see, I didn't quite get it right, but I also have some room taken up with this whole situation. Um, so I think it looks good. And um, some people at work gave me good compliments. They said that it was really beautiful and they couldn't believe I knit it. So that's good, right? The other thing I worked on is actually sitting next to the camera. So I had to go and get it. This is really the only other thing I've knit on other than my Northeasterly blanket, but that is upstairs. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of progress on it. I just knit a little bit on it at bedtime. Um, most nights I'll do like a couple of rows while I'm waiting for the kids to brush their teeth and stuff and um, come in for story time. So really not a lot of progress that you would notice, but it is my bedtime knitting. Um, so this is the As You Like It sweater. I am test knitting this sweater for um, Pink Hair Girl Knits, who is uh, Sally Jane. And I am knitting it out of a very autumnal palette, which I believe I showed on the last episode. Um, I'm going to be repeating this multicolored stripe between all of my semi-solid stripes. And I am working my way down the last set of increases before I separate for the sleeves. So I believe I have two more increases to do. And then I will um, sleeve step, sleeve separate, and then I will continue down the body. So my intent is that I will be able to do two repeats of all of the color blocks. I have three um, semi-solid colors that I'm using and then the one variegated. Um, the current color I'm working with is this one. It is Volan Vine Yarns Volca Base in the Pumpkin Kombucha colorway. Uh, Kristen gifted this to me when we met in person at Rhinebeck. And I think this might be my Rhinebeck sweater because I was thinking um, you know, I'm knitting up some of my Aunt Lynn's stash, so this multicolored, which I will bring closer because now that it's knit up, I love it so much. Like, seriously, isn't that gorgeous? I don't know what the yarn is. I don't know what the base is. I just know it has like 500 and... 40 or 560 yards in it. So it has plenty to be like my main stripe, especially because I'm doing stripes 
This one is Malabrigo uh, Sock in the brick colorway. And then I will be doing another stripe of this and then I will do Harpsichord also in Volan Vine Yarns Volca base. And then back to this color again. I think that I probably will use this color also for the um, neckband, cuffs, and the bottom band, depending on where I end for the bottom ribbing. Um, but yeah, I love this color so much. I love these colors so much. They're so pretty. Um, and it matches my gnome. Doesn't he look gorgeous? He's from um, Simply Serving Handcrafts. I forgot the name last time. And I actually bought a s'mores cupcake from her most recent update because it was a s'mores cupcake and I kind of had to. It has a cute little face on it too, so. Um, yeah, that's really the other thing that I've been working on. And, um, well, here I've got my other color. So this will be my next stripe. But I think that that variegated is really going to bring it all together very well. Um, and then, uh, really quickly, because I'm flying through this, acquisitions. So I pre-ordered the mini skein set number four. Yeah, from Shauna of Adelaide Cottage um, for the Harry Potter blanket cow. But these are all Harry Potter themed yarns. So this one was Magical Places. The last one was Sweets. So um, this one's Weasley's Wizard Wheezies, which is the shop that the twins open. This one is platform nine and three quarters. I love this one so much. Green dots. Of course I love it, it's yellow. Um, Hogwarts. It has some nice pinks on the back too. The burrow. This one is the Forbidden Forest. It's sort of similar to um, Acid Pops from the last set, but it's more blue. And Acid Pops was um, more like an electric green, but it has some of those same um, characteristics in it. And then the last one is Ollivander's. And this one reminds me a lot of Cheetos and Grape Soda from the Yarn at Home Mom. The colorway that she was trying to dye, that's not Lake Minnetonka for me. Um, and it got screwed up and it had a lot of more orange in it. Um, so it's the one colorway that I've ever gotten to name. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Shannon let me name it uh, Gilmore Girls Movie Night. Or Gilmore Movie Night is what she called it. But my skein says Cheetos and Grape Soda. Because that's what they would eat, Lorelei and... Uh, Rory would eat Cheetos and grape soda for movie night. So anyway, that is my acquisition for this week. Oops. And now that I've shown them to you, I can actually add them to my blanket because I wanted to add this one so bad. Because I'm on the yellow stripe of my um, northeasterly blanket and I couldn't do it because I hadn't shown it to you. Now I have. It's getting wound up. And the last thing I'm pondering, which I need opinions on. Um, so I think I'm going to cast on a Sperry, which is a pattern by Amy Miller. I cast one on before and... Um, 
I just didn't like it. It's still sitting over there, actually. I cast it on in um, Dreaming Color Smushy in the Butter Peeps colorway. I feel like I want that for something else. I don't know what yet, but it, I don't feel like it wants to be that sweater. So what I'm thinking instead is I want to do a stripe of um, Enjoy the Silence. So I bought off a of D-Stash two skeins from Vegan Jilly, who had her baby, by the way, and he's so adorable. Um, and then in my surprise box, I got another skein of Sparkle, plus these leftovers also of sparkle. So I feel like I could do a stripe of um, normal Volca, a spark, a stripe of sparkle, continuing on down, interspersed with something hot pink. Because do you see it has hot, hot pink speckles as one of these sets of speckles in it. But I'm struggling. So I'm thinking either this one, which this is the um, Kristen's version, version of the Tits Out Collective yarn. Um, if I want exposure, I'll get my tits out. So it has all of those great colors in it. So it'd be a fun stripe. But I don't know if it has too much orange, maybe? I don't know. Or too many colors. I don't know. I may have to swatch. Or I could go more subtle. And this one is uh, one of Tommy's yarns, Moonstone Dye Works. It's in the Atomic Rust colorway. This is a 100% Superwash Merino. So it is this uh, lighter, paler pink, but it does have some little specks of orange in it as well. Or this one. And this one is Glow Cloud, of course, from No Makers. And it's sparkly. Sparkly. Sparkle. It's sparkle gnome. So I don't know. Do you guys have an opinion? Subtle. In your face. In the middle. So there's my three contrast color choices. With this. So let me know in the comments either for the episode or um, in the Ravelry thread if you have an opinion. If you don't and you're like whatever Nina they're gonna be they're all gonna be great just do whatever you want. I can say that too. Um, so that's everything I have this week guys. It's not much. I am drinking sugar cookie sleigh ride from Celestial Seasonings, and I'm almost out. I have enough for two more cups, and then Christmas is officially over. And I'm drinking it out of my unicorn mug because I can. All right, so my orchid is still not bloomed yet, but it's getting close. Um, I've been watching a lot of videos by Miss Orchid Girl on YouTube, and she's really great. She has a lot of good tips on um, rescuing your orchids, making your orchids grow better, etc. So I've been watching a lot of videos. Um, I'm trying to... There's a couple that I've inherited that I'm nursing back to health. One is... Uh, God, what are those called? They're like the most popular ones. I'm blanking on it because I don't really like them. I don't usually buy those. Oh my god. I'll put it in the text that will go across my face and go, Nina, come on. But I don't remember. Anyway, I have mostly Miltonias, Miltasias, Oncidiums. I like the ones that have pseudobulbs because they're a little more forgiving of you watering them and um, they seem like they grow better. So anyway, um, that's all I have for this week. So I will not see you next week. Have a great week. Keep knitting for the Stasher Shelf Challenge and I will be drawing for a winner 
the first week of April, which I guess is the next time I'll be podcasting. Um, so until then, I will see you guys next time. All right. Bye-bye.